There you see Bob Greasy, number 12, himself a polished and now veteran quarterback, back in the pocket. And he's got the receivers to throw to. In this case, who else but number 42, Paul Warfield, and he hardly needs description for any football fan in America. And then, too, of course, Greasy loves to go to his smaller size but remarkably good receiving tight end in clutch situations, number 88, Jack Mandich, out of Michigan. And uh, Jim Mandich, and there is a typical Mandich catch. And Greasy, if he has to, can scramble. Look at him avoid those would-be tacklers. Watch this. He'll move downfield, pick up decent yardage, and get out of bounds quickly to avoid possibility of injury. Does he have a running game? Well, number 39, Larry Zonka. Anybody who doesn't proclaim him one of the all-time great fullbacks simply has never followed the game. And, of course, there is Mercury Morris to give you both pass receiving and outside running strength. Number 22. They can put it all together. And look at about look at the bench strength. Little butterball, Don Nottingham, picked up from Baltimore and how he came through this year. Can they defense? Just watch this. Sacking Kenny Anderson of Cincinnati in a Monday night game earlier this year. Can they defense the run? Well, Doug Dressler of Cincinnati found out about that. This is a versatile team. And pass defense, watch this. It's been a trademark for the Miami Dolphins in their two previous Super Bowl years. That ball was picked off, my friends, by none other than Nick Bonacani, number 85, against the Jets. Oh, they're, they're a great ball club, but their problem has been injuries, and that's the question mark. But they've held together. Now I think we should consider your team, the Oakland Raiders. Oh, yeah. I think Oakland Raiders will show you that they're pretty versatile offensively and defensively. All right. No question about it. This was the key game for the Oakland Raiders, the game I discussed earlier against Cincinnati. The clock showing 136 left, no timeouts left. And there was the pitch to Fred Boletnikov, who has been so scintillating tonight as he's been chewing up Charlie Watt. A minute 32, that was the use of the sideline pass. But Boletnikov did not stick just to the sideline pass. He had the intelligence to throw down the middle to his tight end, Bob Moore, number 88, out of Stanford. Quickly, Oakland got back into action. And once again, it was to Bob Moore throwing down the middle. And Moore now had them right in position to make the ultimate touchdown. But there was one more thing to do with 39 seconds showing on the clock. Find Mike Ciani. Use that sideline. Throw to the one out of Villanova. Mike got racked up on this play, was out for the rest of the season. But he capitalized, was only a yard or a yard and a half out, 13 seconds left, and Kenny Stabler in total command. Cincinnati seemingly helpless. The handoff to Charlie Smith, who just got a touchdown pass tonight. Charlie going wide, plunging in for the touchdown, and that was perhaps the biggest victory of the year for the Oakland Raiders. What a job that was. And what a ball call, Howard. Okay, we've got to find out who Frank Gifford likes. And you know something? I think you're going to be surprised at... I can't wait for this one. This is terrific. <laughs> All right, let's go to the Golden Giffer. Your pick? Well, it's kind of emotional, I guess, in a way, but it really isn't. Uh, I happen to think a great deal of a man named Arthur Rooney. He's never won anything with his Pittsburgh Steelers, a couple of divisions, but never the big one. But more than that, I think they have the best defensive team in football right at this moment. Of course, they have to get by Buffalo and next uh, Sunday. That's going to be a little tough. But if they do, they might go all the way. Let's take a look at this defensive unit. They're really something else. Elsie Greenwood, Dwight White, Mean Joe Green, and a guy named Ernie Holmes who just annihilates passes. Now, they have 52 sacks of the quarterback over the season. No one is even close to that. No one's within a 10 or 15. I forget exactly what it is, but they are vicious. They have good linebackers, Zach Lambert, Andy Russell, and Jack Ham's having just a tremendous year. And they have Terry Bradshaw, who all of a sudden they've settled on as their quarterback. Bradshaw with a fine day-to-day -day of the 27-3 win over Cincinnati. And Franco Harris, he's back to form. Of course, they were beaten by Oakland 17-0 earlier in the season, but then they had problems like a sore leg at Franco Harris, who went over 1,000 yards today. And, of course, they were unsettled at their quarterback position. Now they are settled, and they can do many things. Terry Bradshaw, 
can run, he can scramble around, and then he can deliver it when he has to. And of course, if Bradshaw has his problems and was injured, as he was today, shaken up a little bit, they can bring on Jefferson and Joe Gillum. Joe Gillum, who can fire it every bit as well, I think, as Joe Namath when he first came up. He's got a really strong arm, but more than anything, I think if, uh, well, I don't mean to deprecate the Steelers' offense, but if they can hold it, then Pittsburgh can win it. Their defensive team can. Uh, Especially can if Art Rooney can play. Uh, he's a wonderful man. I, I don't mean it strictly on that. I happen to believe that they have the strongest defensive team, and I happen to believe the defense wins in football. Okay, no, the Giants proved that. that in all the Giffords years when he was on the offense. They used to tell us, go out and hold it. Let's quickly go then to our respective choices for top offensive and defensive player of the year. In my own case, the guy I pick as the offensive player of the year is the guy you've seen so much of tonight, Kenny Stabler of the Oakland Raiders. Here he is in still another situation. Notice the ease with which he can throw the big bomb to Cliff Branch, as in that case. Stabler has developed it seems to me almost extraordinary. He is as calm back there as Namath was when Namath pulled the first Super Bowl upset. And my own choice for the best defensive player, or the defensive player of the year, is Tony Green, number 43, the free safety of the Buffalo Bills. He had nine interceptions until injured just a few weeks back. He has quarterbacked that Buffalo defense all year long. Made critical interceptions like this one. Just watch that. In the end zone, then going all the way downfield for a touchdown. That was nullified on a penalty call anyway. Uh, what are your choices, Alex? Well, I played it smart. I've combined one guy offensively and defensively. Well, I think... You, Frank? I, well, I'm, I've got... Uh, a couple of guys that I think are really outstanding. I think one of you probably won't be a bit surprised by, and that would be Otis Armstrong of the Denver Broncos. Otis Armstrong gained only 90, years, 90 yards last year, but this year he has really turned into the real heart and soul of the Denver Broncos football team. He's not big. He's a great he receiver, too. Yes, he is. He's a fine receiver, but he goes about 195 pounds, about 5, 10, or 11. Good acceleration, not blazing speed, out of the University of Colorado, or rather Purdue, where he set all kinds of records. But he has really given the Denver Broncos a running game and has added that extra dimension. They know they're never out of a game with this young man. He has a great future as, well, we mentioned Al Davis earlier, was telling us last night, he thought he perhaps was the best running back in the game today. And that might well be. He will lead the NFL. Here's my defensive choice. Arrowhead. They call him Arrowhead. They call him Batches, Ernie Holmes. And to me, he is the best of that Steeler front four, if there is a best. Mean Joe Green is there, Elsie Greenwood and Dwight White. But believe it or not, of their 52 sacks, Ernie Holmes has the most. He is really a something special for that Steeler defense. All right, you're on again, Alex. Well, uh, I've combined, as I said, I combined one guy for offensive and defensive ball player of the year, and his name is Otis Sustrunk. Sustrunk? Uh, Sustrunk, right, Sustrunk. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because uh, it's, it's amazing what he's done, you know? He can do it all. And the great things about him is that Otis, who's a good-looking devil, along with his teammates, uh, kind of a, oh, just kind of a warm kind of a person, can do so much on the football field. Uh, and uh, he's always around the ball, always rushing the passer. He kind of likes to rush the passer. I mean, there's a Pick the example ball right there. That's right. There he goes in again, doing what he likes to do, taking <laughs> the bones away from the quarterbacks. And you know, uh, when he's not uh, playing defense, he can block like crazy too. He's a great offensive blocker. Unfortunately, he was blocking <laughs> his old man at that time. But <laughs> so I, I think he's a great ball player. But seriously. Uh, I think the offensive uh, ball player, as far as I'm concerned, is Kerry Metcalf from the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. He does what everything. He, he, uh, oh, he's done a tremendous job. He's gone over 600 yards rushing. He's picked up 45 uh, passes, and uh, he runs the ball. He brings the ball back. He does everything, Howard.